Hi there. Nice to see you again. Um, today we're looking at this tulips and uh, an enemy picture. It's based on a picture um, of my own flowers in my back garden. I just saw that and I thought I've got to paint that beautiful picture. Um, so if you need the full instructions, there isn't a cheat sheet or a, um, a trace down sheet, but there are the instructions on the site. So you can follow those and download those if you want to. But otherwise, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to start off um, today by doing these tulips and anemones in a little tub. Got the idea from just looking out of my window and I saw the lovely flowers in a little pot there. I thought, got to paint that. So we're going to do minimum drawing with this. We're going to just uh, put where the main flowers are. So a couple of little egg shapes for the tulips. They're a little bit flatter at the bottom than they're a bit more pointy at the top. And a stem or two down. Just give yourself a little hint of where they're going to go. Don't worry too much about the accuracy of the drawing for those because it's just really just positioning them in there. And a little pot down the bottom. Make the pot about a third of the way up. One, two, three. So it's about a third pot and two thirds plants and flowers. And a couple of long tulip leaves, perhaps two or three shapes of the tulip leaves. And again, we're going to put these in where we feel we need them a bit later on. So they'll build up gradually as we work. You might want another little pointy one coming out the back there. All the little anemones, the little star-shaped flowers, I'm not going to draw those in. It's one, there's a couple of reasons for that, is because you'll get a lot more free with where you put in the paint if you just go straight in with the paint or the water and then the paint onto it. If you end up drawing all the exactly flower shapes in there, you'll try and paint in between every line and it will become very tight. So we want a loose way of painting with this. Um, so once I've done that little bit of minimal drawing on there, just a little pot down the bottom, a few leaves, we're going to start getting on with the paint. I'm actually using Buckingford um, 300 gram paper for this, um, which is a, just a normal watercolour paper. You always have to use watercolour paper, you can't use cartridge paper because the paint won't run properly onto that. So, colours. We're going to stick to some pinks and very pale creams for the um, tulips themselves. So the tulips here are going to be a little bit of a um, Elysian crimson, a little bit of pale yellow into them as well. Um, and oh, well, the rest of the colours I'll, ex I'll explain as we go, but we'll just start with that. So the brushes I'm going to use today, they, I tend to just use nylon-y type brushes, just little nylon ones. I don't use sables very often, um, mainly because they're so expensive. Um, but I always find, especially if you're a beginner, that sables will um, are a bit uncontrollable. They hold so much paint and water that you might find it a bit too much for you. So I just use a series of round nylon type brushes. So most of this painting I'll be doing with a, a size 8 round and I'll stick to that through, throughout it. I might use a slightly bigger, slight 12 round for the pot down here. Um, but otherwise it's that. Perhaps a little rigger to do a little... Um, stem or two, but generally for this one it's going to be mostly a size 8. So I'll just mix up some little bits of the colour. A very pale yellow, just a bit of a lemony yellow. Um, and if you're following this and you're not quite sure about what colours are said, the, I've got a handout sheet which you can just download which has got everything listed on it for you so you can just follow it through. Um, and actually just reading that it says cadmium yellow in there, but anyway, hey ho, it doesn't really matter. A pale yellow, very weak bit of yellow. And then I'll make up a bit of a, a puddle of Elysian crimson, just a, um, a crimsony red. Again, don't get too hung up on different names of colours. You just want um, the colours you like, really. It could be the rose madder, it could be um, a purpley red of some sort, or just something which is just called a crimson. Um, it doesn't have to be that exact colour. Um, so, right, now I've mixed those two colours up, I'm just going to go straight in with the water onto the tulip shape. Using just, again, this size 8 brush, um, size 8 nylon brush there, I'm just going to flick some water down, just generally in the shape of the um, tulip flower, across the bottom, and then just encourage it to run down the paper. I always have my board slightly tilted so everything starts to run down slightly. While that's still wet, I'll just get the very weak yellow, flick a few bits in from the top, just let it follow, the paint will follow where you've put water so it would naturally run to where you've got water and then I'm going to just clean the brush into the crimsony red and flick that back up the other way so just 
very simply follow it through just two or three flicks like that just take a little bit of the puddles out and that's it encourage it to run down the stem so it joins in and that's all you need leave these little light bits in the middle it just looked like the patterning on the tulip or the highlights there just going to take a little water out of that so it's um and that, that's it, that's a tulip. So I can go on to do another one now. So again, just flick the water down. Try and use clean water, not grubby water as I've just used. Flick it down, cross around the bottom, form the shape of the tulip, let the water run down a bit. And then flick in a bit of yellow at the top because they're paler at the top there. So just a little bit of creamy yellow colour. A little bit of the crimson red. Again, just flick it up to give you the streaks and the forms of the tulip. Encourage it to run down the stem a little way and then just dry your brush on a bit of tissue, put the tip of the brush in and take out any puddles. And that's it, two done. It's a really quite quick way of painting this, is a very loose way of just putting flowers in. So last one here, flick it round, a bit of clean water or slightly grubby water as I've been using. So just keeping that, leave some little dry bits in there because they will help to just give you some little highlights in the flower itself. A little bit of pale yellowy colour, flick it down and then into your crimsony red and just flick that back up the other way. There we are. I'll say three but it's there's four on there. One, two, three, perhaps four dashes up there and then you just say as it does, I said before encourage it to run down the stem there. Disappear into the pot. That's, that's the um, tulip flowers done. Don't need to do any more to them than that. Just let them sit there and they will just gradually blur out and uh, soften into that water. So now I'm going to go on to these little anemone flowers. They're a beautiful colour. There's a lovely vibrant blue colour. Um, so I'm going to use ultramarine blue and a tiny touch of alizarin crimson to make it a little bit more purpley. So I'm going to mix a puddle of that up. If you want to use a little bit of a violet colour or, or a rose madder or something like that, you'll find it gets a brighter purple. I'm just going to have a rummage in my paint box here for a moment and just see if I can find a bit of rose madder. Oh, there's a bit of dioxine violet or something like that. Oh, a bit of rose madder, one of the two. Look at that, you always look after your paints, keep the lids on, keep them nice and clean, not like I do, because otherwise they go hard. But we'll just try a little bit of that, or one of those, to give me a, just a bit more vibrant colour. You can just mix it with a, a blue and a red, but this will just give you a little bit of a brighter colouring here. So I'm just going to use a bit of that, if I can get it out the tube. If your paint dries in a tube, just split it and use it like a palette, so you can still Always make your paint up with um, any old bits of watercolours. Don't throw them away if you can't get it out of the tube. You can just split the tube and just keep using that. So a little bit of the um, rose madder this time and a little bit more blue to give me a bit, a little bit more vibrant purple than just the losing crimson. Right, so now we're going to put these little flowers on. Um, and the, you want lots of these little anemones. They're, they're called wind flowers, I think. They're nice flowers of spring over here. They're lovely bright ones. And all I'm going to do is just put on some dashes from the outside in to give me the petal shapes. Outside in for most of it. It's a bit awkward doing it that way. The reason I'm using it from the outside in is the brush will naturally give you a petal shape. And then into that, I'm just going to drop in that nice vibranty purple, a little bit too pinky. I'll get a little bit more blue into it. Just vary the tone, that's better. And then just let it run up the water. So gradually as it, as it goes up into the water which we've put on there, it'll just blur out towards the end so it'll be stronger in the middle and it'll just give you the lovely shape of it. Simple. So just keep going with those, just put lots of little dashes, little crosses on outside in, it'll just naturally form a little shape. In fact, if you use slightly grubby water, you can see where you're going with them. So just bring those in and then drop in a little bit of your colour into the middle, let it run up the stems and then you'll get these varying shades to the, the petals so they're not all the same strength. We want a few slightly different shaped ones. 
So you want some on the side, so if you have them on the side, it's like doing a, a, a saucer shape. So if you're doing them round, keeping all the petals the same level, they'll just look like you're looking directly on them. But if you do them longer on some sides and shorter on the other, they'll look like the flowers on its side. So with that, we'll just do some on its side. So we'll have some longer ones that way, and then shorter as they get to the top, slightly shorter as they get to the bottom, and then drop the colour in. And it can vary this shade. It makes some a little weaker, it makes some a little stronger. There we go, we'll just touch those in there. As they're starting to dry, like this, if you just put your tip of the brush in, you can lift out a little centre. So wait until they start to dry a little bit, otherwise it will just keep running back in there. So just lift out a little centre as you go, and in a little while we'll put some other colour into the middle there, but that's just giving them a little heart. So if you do it when it's too soon, you won't, you'll lift all the paint back out. So just wait until it starts to dry a bit, and you just lift out a little bit of the colour there. Um, let's do a few more so you can just see what's going on. One, two, three, four, five. We'll just have one bent over there so it's on its side. Again, just touch in a little bit of the colour, let it run. So they become quite quick. I might even put another petal in there. Um, and then a few more at the top here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got that one all the way around. Um, I was looking at them the other day, they've actually got 20 or so petals on there, probably more than that. I didn't count them all, so I think you want at, at least six or eight in there to, to make it work. So I'm going to just carry on doing some of these. So I'll do a lot more of these. If you want to catch up with me in a few minutes and after I've done these, um, it's the same principle, so I'll see you in a minute. So I've done quite a few little flowers all around here now, which just fills the pot quite nicely. You want a few little stems as well, and all you can do is just flick down the, the purpley colour, just flick it down a little way, just give you a hint of stems. We're going to have to work in between some of these a bit later on, so make sure they come into the pot somewhere, and I'll probably do for those. So we've got two types of leaves in this pot. One of the leaves from the anemones, which are like little fern leaves, they're like, or almost like parsley leaves, they're just feathery type of leaf. And then we've got some solid tulip leaves in there. So we're going to do the ferny type leaves first. S similar sort of thing, we're just going to, as we did with the flowers, we're just going to dot on the water. Again, I'm still using this little eight brown brush. Dot on the water in a sort of almost like a triangle shape, but uneven. And then dot in a bit of yellowy green, that's um, lemon yellow and ultramarine blue, to give me a, a lemony green. So that combines some of those dots of water, but it makes it um, uneven around the edges. And while that's still wet, I'm going to take a bit of stronger bluey green and just pop that in somewhere, just randomly, so it just changes the colour a little bit. And just let it run. Just take the tip of the brush and any big puddles, just take big puddles out of it. I'll do another one so you can see what's going on with that. Just move away from that one a little bit. So we just dot on some water, almost like an uneven triangle shape. So it comes across, so it's not straight, but it's uh, an uneven triangle. Dot in the bit of yellow, yellowy green, I should say. So you get this feathery look to it, and then a bit of the bluey green, and again, just dot that in. Take out any puddles. So you've got this changing of colour and tone in there and it's also giving it lots of different um, textures to it. So I'm going to keep going up, up with these, um, just filling in some of the space, not completely but most of it. I have another little leaf coming out here in between these little flowers, a bit of the water on, a bit more yellowy green and then a bit more bluey green just to vary the colour and the tone of it. Um, same on this side, we'll have another one out here. And I'm gradually going to work up the pot, putting, oh, look at that, a bit of grubby water. Oh, you can see what I'm doing, which makes a nice effect for you. But make sure you get some yellowy green in there as well. That should have been clean water, really, but you can see it doesn't really make it too different. The only trouble is if you use a paint colour first, you'll get it... Um, it won't get so much variation into the shades as you will do otherwise. 
Um, I'll pop another one or two up here. Bit of clean water. Dot on the water in a little triangular shape. I'm having it pointing upwards this time. Yellowy green. And then dotting in a bit more the bluey green just to give you some effects into that. I'll carry on and do a few more. So again, if you want to catch up in a few minutes, you can see how it is a bit later on. OK, so I've got lots of little leaves in there. That should be about enough. And what I'm going to do now is work the main tulip leaves in between these flowers and the leaves here. We're going to use three colours. We're going to use the yellowy green or a, another yellowy green. You can use cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue if you want to for this one. and then. Um, a more bluey green with ultramarine blue and a bit of cadmium yellow. Sounds like the same thing, but if you actually put them in slightly different quantities, you'll get two different shades of green in there, which is great. And then as we get down to the bottom of the um, leaf, we're going to use a little bit of indigo, which is just a dark blue colour. If you haven't got that, then use ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt umber, but just something which will go a nice dark bluey colour down the bottom here. So we're going to start at the top of one of these leaves. So we're going to work all the way down to where the, the top of the pot is. So I'm going to just dampen, again, just with the small brush like this, um, dampen the top part of the leaf where I want the colours to blur a bit. Around there, it doesn't matter if you leave a little gap between the flowers and the leaf you're just putting in there. As it comes down here, it comes out the other side of the tulip. And then as it gets down to the middle here, I'm going to leave that dry, but so I can just work down onto dry paper. So the top bit, a bit of the yellowy green colour. So if we get the light coming towards the top, it's a little way down. Then I'm going to swap to the darker bluey green colour, let that blend in because it's wet, it will blend. So just bringing that up, leave a little bit of a halo around the tulip itself. It makes it look more watercolour-y if you've got some little light gaps in there and then bringing it down and as I get down to the lower part, it gets into the pot here, I'm going to swap to this um, indigo colour and as that mixes with the greens, it goes a very strong dark green colour which is lovely to use in the depth or in the middle of the pot here. And then it just get more and more just indigo on its own as it comes down here, just letting those little stems just taper out until I get to where the top of the pot is. So carefully, this is now onto dry paper as it gets down the bottom here, so it makes it stronger and darker. And that's a little leaf put in. We can now do another leaf, perhaps the one next to it, or the one over the other side here. Again, just dampening that leaf up the top here, because you want that to blend at the top here, around the tulip. Just let that fade away down here. And then as it comes to the bottom, I'm going to stop. So a little bit of the yellowy green towards the top. To make it where it's coming out into the light. I've just wobbled that. It's a bit straighter than that, really. Bluey green into that and next to it. Try not to go over your tulip like I've just done. Um, oh, that doesn't really matter. If it just goes a little way. Then a little bit of that more bluey green so it's blending in with the yellowy green. Leave a little either side of the stem then as I come down the bottom here just blend in a bit of the indigo with that darker green as well. Bringing that down a bit further. In between some of these little leaves now let that um, stem just taper out a bit. And then as I come down here just stronger with the indigo colour or your dark tone whichever that may be in between these little flower petals. This will give you depth into your picture to make it look like there's leaves in the background here, bringing those down, right down to the bottom. So it's a little darker than that one. Let's put a bit more dark into that one. It will dry a shade lighter as well. So, so that's two just about done. Just touching in those little gaps. This is actually negative painting which usually instills terror into the heart of many, but um, it is quite straightforward really once you get the hang of it. Um, I'll put another leaf in over here perhaps. Again, bigger areas, I'm just going to dampen a bit first with a little bit of water so it blends more easily. It's around that 
flower down here. So just follow the line through. Sometimes you have to stop, stand up and have a look at it to see where the leaf's going to. What you don't want it to do is come in here and then come out the other as if it's stepped over a bit. So just make sure it follows through. Then as you start to come down here, swap to a more bluey green, make it go darker. In between some of these flower petals, you can keep it dry down the bottom here so you can get a bit more definition. And then swap to your indigo, mix it with the blue green. And then go down into the rest of the pot. So, oops, I've just got over a leaf there, never mind. As if we're going right down to the depths of the pot there. And a few little bits of dark down the bottom there. In between your flower petals, in between the stems, in between the leaves. Puts a little tiny triangle in there. Probably needs, I know four is an odd number, but we can put some blurry ones in the background, but I think we just need one more leaf over there. Um, so just dampen that a little bit. So it blends. Let's bring that in. Yellowy green on the top. I'm going to put a few more blurry ones in in a minute as well in the background to fill the pot out a bit, but we'll just do these for the moment and let those dry out. And then into your darker one, there's my indigo colour, that's it. Make this nice and dark as it comes in towards the centre here. A little bit more dark up around that one. And there's an even stronger dark indigo or dark blue, dark brown mix, whichever you've got. Just to give that a bit more depth. A little bit fiddly, but its effect is pretty good then. So, okay, might need a hint of a leaf here, perhaps another hint of a leaf there, but I'll sort those out in a moment. So while that's drying, I'm just going to do the, the pot. So we want some nice strong blue for that. So I'm just going to use an ultramarine blue. Um, just mix it with a bit of water so it's ultramarine blue on its own. A nice big puddle of that, fairly strong. And then we want again some of the indigo colour because that will mix with the blue quite nicely and go quite dark for a shadow a bit on it. So again, I'm going to wet this pot so it blends and blurs almost up to the flowers, but not quite. If you want to leave a little highlight on there, it works quite nicely. So just bands of water really, just making sure it's got some coverage of water onto it. Into the blue, so now I've got that ready and waiting, I'll go into the blue. Around the little pot in those little bits in between. Nice and bold and strong. Leave a little highlight perhaps, doesn't matter if you don't. But it does give it a bit of a shine to the pot. I'll go into that. Around the bottom. And then while this is still wet, let's just cover this. I could have done with a slightly bigger brush, I think, for that, but we're here now, so. This is where I usually get one side of the pot leaning, so I'm just trying to make sure it's upright. And then once I've got that blue in there, all around those little flowers, a little bit of a corner up there, I think, I'll get the indigo colour. And again, one side's going to be a bit more shady, a bit more shady under the flowers, so a little bit darker colour around the edges here, just under some of those flowers, just a bit of a shadow onto it. Tiny, only just a tiny touch while this is still wet, a little bit down the edge, perhaps and certainly down the bottom here, where the pot's a little bit more shady, and let it blend and run in. So those are the, that's the um, pot done, most of the leaves, I want to put a few more um, 
uh, leaves and flowers into the background here. Um, but I'm, all I'm going to do now is just put a bit of shadow in. So again, I'm just going to wet around here and just have a little bit of wheat colour. It doesn't matter if you touch the pot with the water because it will just become a bit of a shadow. You might find you have to reinstate the pot at the bottom there as you go. But I'm just put a bit of water on and I'll use a bit of the purpley colour I had before for the flowers. i put a bit of that in as a bit of a shadow. Just touching it up to the bottom of the pot there, bring it away. Just a little hint of shadow, you don't want too much in there. Perhaps a bit of weak indigo as well, where it's a bit darker. Just a tiny touch, it brings all the colours in and around, around there. So if that runs a bit too much, then we might need to just reinstate that edge a little bit later on, take out any puddles. So the background leaves now, we're just going to put a few of the background ones in. Oh, I can put the little yellow centres into those flowers, I forgot about that. Just a little bit of weak yellow into some of those little centres. Onto the dry paper there just to give it a bit more shape. Right, so we want to do some blurry leaves because if I put um, all the tulip leaves in onto the same way as I've done them there, they will get very solid so it looked like a fan, a, a, a very hard um, band of leaves there. So I'm going to, I've still got the colours here so what I'm going to do is in some areas wet the paper quite close up to the, the flowers. In fact you can just lip, nip it over the little flowers here if you want to. So that's quite, um, just dampen the paper there so it's wet close up to those edges and then just get a little bit of that the greeny colours. Put it onto the dry bit on the other side so you get the shape of the petal, the leaf sorry, and then tickle it down into that water so it blurs away. So a hint of leaf, there will be a bit of the other green in there as well. So it's not solid, it just gives you a little suggestion of the the leaf in the background there. Just going to dry my brush and anywhere where it's blurring a bit too much just put the tip of the brush in just to give me, take it away a little bit so it's a little bit softer. So a few of those, you might want to do a blurry flower or two. Um, perhaps up here I'm just going to wet a patch. Take the puddle out of it so it's not soaking wet, you just want it slightly, um, slightly blurry and then just put in a little hint of flower petal at the top there, put a hint of the stem or something to just as a little suggestion and they'll just look softer in the background. So again you want a leaf or two, perhaps a flower or two around here. So I'm just going to wet it up around the flowers, take the puddle out and then a little bit of the green onto the dry bit will form a nice sharp edge but then you just let it blur into that water to make it a little darker green in there as well so it matches all the shades and don't complete it just let it come into the pot a little way I think I'll just have one or two more blurry leaves or blurry flowers I have a little blurry flower here so just dampen it take the puddle out of it a little bit of my purpley colour I had before and then just a, a little hint of a half a flower petal coming in down there where else shall I put one? Perhaps something up here. Dampen it. Take the puddle out. And again, we might just have half a leaf just coming up into that background as a suggestion of something else behind. Last little one now, I'm just going to do one down here. And I think for this one, we'll have half a flower again. Water on, take the puddle out of it, a little bit of the pinky purpley colour and just perhaps a little flower bud and a suggestion. Slightly different colour to the others, I don't mind, we'll leave it at that. And I think that's it, that's all there is to it.